step back from Jacob's well. It's where I do my laundry, wash my clothes. I can't believe how hot it is. It's still early in the morning. <sighs> you know, it's so hot now. I, I just can't imagine what it was like when my sister went to the well. Uh, she wasn't like me. She didn't get up early in the morning, right after dawn, go down to the well. No, she went at noon time. She was crazy. She had her reasons. She knew that if she went to the well at noontime, there'd be nobody else there. She'd be all alone, and nobody would bother her. Yeah, she knew if she went middle of the day, hot, nobody else would be there. She wouldn't have to deal with her neighbors. She wouldn't see them. They wouldn't be there. Oh. They all had their own opinions about her, and they let her know every chance they had. She was surprised that day when she saw the Nazarene there. He was all alone. And she was shocked when he spoke to her. You see, Jews don't normally speak to Samaritans, and in this country, men never speak to women in public. When he asked her for a drink of water, she said to him, well, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of water of me, a woman of Samaria? He said, woman, if you knew the gift of God and who it is that is asking you for this drink of water, you would offer him water. She looked around, and she saw that he had no bucket to draw with. So she asked him, are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who dug this well? And he and his flock and his sons drank of it? But he was speaking of a different kind of water. He said to her, those who drink of this water will become thirsty again. But those who drink of the water that I will give will never become thirsty, for I will give them living water. Now, out here, water is a very valuable commodity. We do not <coughs> take it lightly. So when he offered her living water, can you see why she would want it absolutely as much as she could get? Somehow, this man knew that there was a problem in her home. He told her to get her husband and come back. Well, she told him she didn't have a husband. Well, she really didn't. But somehow, he knew that she had already had five husbands. How do you suppose she, he knew that? And how do you suppose he knew that the man she was living with now wasn't her husband? It was at this moment that she realized the man was some kind of a prophet. But she didn't know what to say. So she asked him a religious question. She said, our ancestors worshipped on this mountain. But you say the place where people worship must be in Jerusalem. He answered with an even more perplexing statement. He said to her, woman, the time is coming when you will worship neither here on this mountain or in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know, for salvation is from the Jews. But the time is coming, in fact it is here, when we will worship in spirit and truth. For God seeks those who worship him in that way. God is spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. Spirit and truth? Who was this man anyway? She said to him, I know that Messiah is coming. When Messiah comes, he will tell us everything. He looked at her and he said, I am he. Just then, out of nowhere, his disciples appeared. They couldn't understand why he was speaking to a woman. Oh, she wanted to get out of there in a hurry. She left everything. Even left her water jug 
dug at the well, and she almost ran back to town. She was out of breath when she got there. I saw her when she got back. She was talking like a fool. She was almost babbling. Come, come, see this man I met. He knows everything about me. He knows everything I have ever done. He was at the well, and that's where we were going, so it took us a little while, but we got there. And his disciples wanted him to eat the food they had brought in town. But he had a different way about him. He didn't care about himself. He cared about us, us Samaritans. In fact, that was why he came to the well. He wanted to meet us, and through my sister, he met every one of us. In fact, he stayed with us for two days, teaching us all about the will of the Father and the kingdom of God. In fact, people who learned so much from him said to my sister, it isn't because of what you told us now that we believe, it is because of what we have heard for our, from ourselves. We know that this man is truly the savior of the world. Well, that's why I'm here now. I'm sorting clothes, holding clothes, drying out clothes. My sister, she's out in town speaking with people who used to turn their back on her whenever they saw her. They didn't want to be seen with her. They didn't want to talk to her. Oh, that visit to the well, that just opened up a wellspring in her, and that water keeps on flowing and flowing touching people's lives, cleaning up their souls, filling them with the word of God. And me, well, I guess I have to say that I'm a new person too. I don't speak to people the way I used to. I don't think the same way I used to. I know I don't treat people the way I used to. That man, his name was Jesus, by the way. If you open up your hearts to him, he just opens up a wellspring within you that is unbelievable. And me? Eh. Did something really special for me, too. Gave me back the sister 